Okay, good morning, everyone. So we are going to talk about the bond today. So if you have any question, please uh, stop me anytime. This is quite important topic. So what is bond? This is the definition of bond, you can see that. A bond is a form of interest bearing note. So maybe in your principles of accounting one, you learned that notes payable will have some interest, right? Same bond is a form of interest bearing note. So like a note, <clears throat> it means that like a note, uh, the bonds also have some interest. And again, like a note, a bonds require periodic interest payments. That means for notes payable, you remember that every year, okay, you are liable to pay some interest. Same in case of bond, uh, it requires periodic interest payment. And the face amount, face amount to be repaid at the maturity date. Face amount to be repaid at the maturity date. For example, today you receive, today you receive $50,000, okay? So this money you receive today, and this money is called the face value, face amount. So today you receive $50,000 by selling bond, for example, at the maturity date, at the maturity date, you are going to pay the same amount, $50,000. But in between, in between, if it is a five years bond or 10 years bond or two years bond, in between, you have to pay the interest or you have to record the interest. So look at this diagram carefully. So today you receive $50,000 according to this diagram. Today you receive $50,000, today is the issue date, okay? Today you sell your bond or issue your bond. Today you sell your bond and you receive $50,000. And this bond is a five years period. And five years later, when the maturity date came, you are also going to pay $50,000. But in between, you are liable to pay some periodic interest like here 5000 at the end of year 1 5000 at the end of year 2 5000 year 3 4 and 5 so this is the overview of the bond okay very simply bond is a form of interest bearing note it means that bond will have some interest and when you are going to pay this kind of interest you are going to pay or you are going to record okay usually we are going to record interest expense at the end of every year, according to the terms and condition. And at the maturity date, we are liable to return back the face amount of money. Now, this is uh, a bond certificate. I told you that today you are going to sell a bond, right? So bond is a piece of paper, actually. Bond is a piece of paper. Uh, this is uh, one example of bond. This is <clears throat> one example of bond. You can see that today, for example, today you will sell this paper, right? Today you sell this paper and you can collect 5,000 US dollar from the market. Okay, 5,000 US dollar from the market. But you know that this is the face amount of the bond, right? This is the face amount of the bond. And you are liable to pay $5,000, maybe two years, three years, or five years later, right? And every year, every year you are liable to pay 5.75% interest. 5.75% interest. So if we analyze this certificate, we see that we have several important points here. You can see that this is the issuer of the bond. Who is selling the bond? Okay, this company, this company, international mineral and chemical corporation they are selling this bond they need money okay they, they are called the issuer of the bond and the bond will have a maturity date because i told you that at the end of the maturity date you are you are liable to return back this money right 
So it will have a maturity date. For example, this is the maturity date. This is a maturity date. And you are liable to pay interest every year. You're liable to pay interest every year. So how much interest you are liable to pay is depends on what is the amount of interest mentioned in the bond paper, okay, bond certificate. So here it is mentioned that it is 5.75% interest. And uh, what is the face amount of the bond? The face amount of the bond is 5,000 US dollar. Okay, face amount of the bond is 5,000 US dollar. And this is the contractual interest rate, okay? So we find that a bond, correct, that means a bond have face amount, it will have a maturity date, it will have a maturity date, then uh, it will have a contractual contractual interest rate. So these three are the important point here. These three are the important point. You have a face amount, you will have a maturity date, and you have the interest rate. So according to this question or certificate, our face amount is 5,000 US dollar. Maturity date may be, or maturity date, or we can say here, term of the bond. Term of the bond. We assume that this five years. And this is the interest rate. Contractual interest rate is 5.75%. Now, when you are going to sell this bond in the market, because this is your company's bond, right? This is your product. This is your product. You are going to sell it. Okay, you are going to sell it and you have to go to the bond market to sell it. And people will get your, people will buy your certificate and people will give you money. Same a, a product, like you go to the market, you sell it, right? You give them the product and they give you the money. Same, you go to the bond market, you will sell this certificate and the people will give you this money. Now, when people come to buy your bond, this is the information you provided to them. You, you tell them that, you tell them that this is the face amount of the bond. That means if you buy it, you have to give me $5,000 and you can use this certificate. You can use this certificate for five years and I am going to give you 5.75 percent interest every year and at the maturity date at the maturity date you return back my certificate okay you return back my certificate i will return back your money right something like this so this is contractual interest rate is offered from company that means your company your company offered this rate 5.75 percent now think about the market because you go to the market with your product right so market may have different rate market may have different rate that means your interest rate your proposed your proposed interest rate is 5.7% but market may have different rate Okay, what kind of rate market may have? What kind of rate market may have? Maybe market rate is market rate is also also five point seven five percent. Okay, market rate also maybe five point seven five percent because your rate is five point seven five, right? And market also five point seven five. So if it is the case. If it is the case, it is called face amount bond. Face amount bond.
trace amount bond, right? Why it is called trace amount bond? Because company rate equal market rate. Right? Company rate or contractual rate equal market rate, right? Do you understand? Then market may have another option. Market rate is 6%. Market rate is 6%. It means that, it means that market rate is greater than market rate is greater than the company rate right so market rate is 66 percent you can say that market rate is six percent and company rate company rate is 5.75 percent so market rate is higher that means market demand is higher okay you promise to give them 5.75% interest, but market said that, no, I want, I want 6% interest from you, right? Market demand is higher that market wants more money from you, something like this in future. So this kind of bond is called, is called a discount bond. Discount bond. So if you sell your bond, if you sell your bond with higher interest rate, okay, it means that you sell your product with a discount. Do you understand? So sometimes you can see that uh, you buy something from uh, online uh, with a discount, right? That means who is going to sacrifice? The seller. The seller is going to sacrifice some money. Like here, you are you you want to pay them interest five point seven five percent, but market says that I need I need more interest. So you are going to pay more money to them as interest, right? That means you are going to sell your product with a discount. Now, another scenario. Another scenario is here. Market rate is 5%. That means market rate, market rate is lower market rate is lower than the company rate. If this is the case, it is called a premium bond. It is called a premium bond. So premium bond is a good news for the seller. If you want to sell this bond, okay, it is your good news. Why your good news? Because you propose them, you propose them to provide 5.75% interest, right? If anyone buy your bond, you will give them 5.75% interest, but market demand is not 5.75. Market demand is only 5%. That means market said that give me less money. I no need more money because your company or your bond is a very reputable, reputed bond, okay? Reputable company. So I, I don't want 5.75, 5% is enough. That means you are going to pay them less money as interest. If this is the calls, uh, case, uh, it is called the premium bond. So in this chapter, uh, this is the important concept. It is the important concept because when we'll solve a question, okay? When you are going to solve a question, you have to figure out, you have to figure out whether it is a face amount bond, okay? Whether it is a face amount bond, whether it is a discount bond, or whether it is a premium bond. So based on this kind of in information, uh, you are going to use different, way to solve the question. So we remember that in the in the question paper, you may not be uh, mentioned whether it is a face amount bond, whether it is a discount bond or whether it is a premium bond. You have to uh, understand by yourself by applying this kind of knowledge. Do you understand? No, pros proceeds from issuing or selling a bond. Now, uh, we are going to see some journal entries or uh, some calculations, uh, how to uh, record it uh, when company 
would like to sell a bond or would like to issue a bond. So when a corporation issue or sell bond, the sales price, the cash you are going to receive, okay, because you go to the market with this certificate, right? And you are going to receive something from market. They said that when a corporation sell a bond, the sales price, that means the cash received for the bond depends on several factors. Okay, depends on, depends on, depends on several factors. Simply think that you go to the market with your product, okay, and you want to sell it, you want to sell it, and you know the price of your bond, you know it, because it is your product, right? Your product, you know the price, but don't expect that you are going to receive money the same amount you mentioned in your bond. Maybe the amount of your product, okay? Maybe similar, I told you that, or maybe higher or maybe lower. So we don't know the market, right? We don't know the market. So we go to the market. Now we are going to receive money today. So how much money we, we are going to receive today is depends on these factors. Do you understand my point? So face amount of the bond, we already know what is the face amount of the bond because it is your bond, you know this price, right? The face amount of the bond, then interest rate on, on the bonds. Look at our interest rate on the bonds. Here, interest rate on the bonds means interest rate mentioned on the bond, right? Interest rate mentioned on the bond. So here it is clearly mentioned. What is the rate? It is clearly mentioned. What is the rate? The term of the bond. It may be five years. It may be ten years, or it may be twenty years, thirty years. It depends on the term. Okay. It is also mentioned in the on the bond paper. Now, finally, we see that. Finally, we see that another important point is here is market rate, right? Another important things to consider, what is the price of the bond today? It is the market rate. It is a market rate. Do you understand? So not only interest rate mentioned on the bond, we should consider the interest rate on the market, market demand. Okay. So based on this kind of factors, based on the, based on this kind of factor, we are going to determine what is the price today. For example, here, look at here. Here I mentioned, here I mentioned today, you are going to receive $50,000, right? Today you are going to receive $50,000. So we are going to calculate this money first. What is the amount of the bond? So how is the amount you are going to receive from market today? You know, you know this information. Look at it, you know this, five years later, five years later, how much you have to pay? Five years later, you have to pay $50,000, right? And you promise them, you promise them to pay 5,000 interest every year. You already know that. Why you know that? Because it is mentioned on the certificate. The certificate said that if anyone buy this bond, you promise to pay $50,000 five years later, and every year, every year you are going to pay them $5,000 interest. It is fixed. This information is fixed. Why this information fixed? Because it is mentioned on the certificate. But this amount, present value is not fixed. What is the money you are going to receive today? It is not fixed. Why it is not fixed? Because it depends on the market. Okay, you go to the market, your product is very valuable product, okay? Then you can get more money from market, right? You go to the market, your product is not demandable, you are going to sell it with discount, right? Or your product is quite interesting, you go to the market, uh, you can get the same price. So the different situ situation. So what is the money you are going to receive today? It's not mentioned, okay? It should be calculated. And it should be calculated based on the market rate. So be careful. When we are going to, when we are going to calculate the sales proceeds, okay? When we are going to calculate the sales proceeds, that means how much cash you are going to receive today? How much cash you are going to receive today? This amount, that means this is called the present value, right? Another term is called present value. So what is the money you are going to receive today? Today means present value, okay? So this amount is going to determine 
based on the market interest rate, based on the market interest rate of the similar bond. Okay, so in the question paper, you can see that uh, when you are going to solve a problem, you will find two interest rate. Okay, you are going to find two interest rate. One interest rate is contractual interest rate, this one. Okay, so contractual interest rate is using to calculate the interest expense. Look at here, this is the interest expense, right? So contractual, I repeat again, contractual interest rate is used to calculate the interest expense. But what is the present value of this money? What is the present value of this money today? It depends on the market interest rate. Okay. So I can mention here. So for example, we have uh, two interest rate. So interest rate on the bond, okay? Interest rate on the bond is used to calculate interest expense is used to calculate the interest expense. For example, we find that interest expenses, uh, interest expenses $5,000 $5, every year. Yes. So this, this money you are going to pay how many years? For example, this money you are going to pay, this interest expense you are going to pay five years. Five years. Now, can you remember in our previous class, I also draw this kind of diagrams. So this $5,000, this $5,000 is a future cash flow, right? It is only one time or more than one time. More than one time, right? So this $5,000, is more than one time and they are the similar amount right if they are the similar amount when you calculate the present value which table you, you use can you remember we have we have present value table we have present ordinary annuity table and we have annuity due table right so when we are going to calculate the present value of this 5000 today which table you use table four right ordinary annuity because the first payment is not today First payment is not today. This $5,000 first payment is one year later. And at the end of the year, look at here, $50,000. How many times you are going to pay this money? Only one time, right? Only one time. So we are going to use the table two, present value table. Can you remember our first class about this topic? Yes. So we use the table, we use the year, and we use the interest rate, right? So when we are going to calculate the interest rate, sorry, uh, when we are going to calculate the present value, so market rate, market rate is used to calculate present value. You understand? So question will give us the market rate. Question will give us the market rate. Question will give us the interest rate mentioned on the bond. Okay. So we are going to use uh, interest rate mentioned on the bond to determine what is the amount of interest expense okay what is the amount of interest expense but but when we calculate the present value present value of this money uh, we are going to use we are going to use the market interest rate so i already explained i already explained contract rate okay i already explained market rate i already explained how to determine the price of the bond today, okay? How to determine the price of the bond today. Now, I also explained what is the meaning of a discount bond. I already mentioned what is the meaning of a face amount bond. I also mentioned what is the meaning of a premium bond, right? So look at more examples. So contractual interest rate, Contractual, this, this, the left side, the left side is the contractual interest rate, 7%, 7% and 7%. Okay, so 7% is a contractual interest rate. Now, what is the market in the past case? Market rate is 8%. Market rate is higher. If market rate is higher, it is called a discount bond. So 
market rate is higher it is called a discount bond right so can you guess today you are going to receive more money or less money if it is a discount bond if it is a discount bond okay uh, if we come here if we come here that we know this five years later we are we are going to pay fifty thousand dollars okay five years later we are going to pay fifty thousand dollars so if it is a discount bond can you guess today you will receive more than fifty thousand or you are going to receive less than fifty thousand can you guess it if it is a discount bond okay today you are going to receive more than fifty thousand or less than fifty thousand you sell it with a discount you are the seller less than right yes because you sell it with a discount so you are going to receive less money today now if it is a premium bond okay if it is a premium bond five years later you will pay them fifty thousand dollars today today you are going to receive more money or fifty thousand or less of the fifty thousand of course more fifty thousand right because premium means you you are the gainer right you are the gainer but if it is a face amount bond that means market rate and uh, company rate is similar then five years later you will pay them fifty thousand dollar today you are going to receive the same money so this is mentioned here clearly greater than or less than this kind of things you have to remember so look at your market rate and uh, company rate is similar if similar means similar means in future you will pay them fifty thousand dollar today you are going to receive also fifty thousand dollar right and if it is a premium bond if it is a premium bond your rate is seven percent but market rate is six percent okay market need less money in future so premium bond means you are going to receive more money today okay you are going to receive more money today so the bond issue price okay bond issue price depends on this factor whether it is a discounted bond whether it is a premium bond whether it is a face amount bond okay now let's see more examples let's see more examples look at this question assume that on january 1st 2005 this company issued the following bonds okay. so for example this is your company so think that uh, this is your company and today is the january 1st of any year okay and you are going to issue this bond and you know this information you know this information the the uh, the face amount of the bond the face amount of the bond is one hundred thousand dollar that means uh, this is already mentioned in the bond price bond uh, bond certificate and this is your interest rate that means your company's interest rate your company said that your company said that if you buy my bond I am promise you to give you uh, twelve percent interest every year. Now interest is paid. Interest is paid when semi annually. Can you remember what is the meaning of semi annually? In our first class of this course, we talk about the time value of money, right? So I told you that uh, we have to compound it annually, semi annually, or uh, uh, monthly, something like this, right? So semi annually means two times a year, two times a year. So interest rate divided by two, right? And times, uh, time period times two, something like this. So this is important point you have to consider. So interest rate paid twice a year when one is June 30 and another is another is December 31st. So June 30 means this interest is not pay, pay today. And remember, I told you that if you pay interest today or if you pay interest some another day from today we have different method right we have different method so we are going to use table four right present value of ordinary annuity because this is not today main theme is the first payment is not today if first payment is not today it is table four present value ordinary annuity and terms of the bond terms of the bond is given five years okay terms of the bond given five years now we don't this we know our information this is our information right now we go to the market with our bond and we find that market rate is also similar market rate is also 
market rate is also similar, 12%. So we offer 12% and market rate is also 12%, right? Now I told you that this contractual interest rate is used, is used to calculate interest expense. Well, this rate is used to calculate interest expense and uh, it is divided by two. So it's become 6%. Clear? Why 6%? Because it is semi-annually, right? It is semi-annually, semi-annually. Then market interest rate is used calculate present value. Market interest is used to calculate present value. So when we are going to use the table, okay? When we are going to use the table, we are going to see the market rate. Okay, we are going to see the market rate. So five years times two equal 10, right? So from table, we are going to looking for year 10, clear. Then market interest rate. So again, it is an interest rate divided by two equals 6%. So interest rate divided by two because it is semi-annually, right? And uh, times uh, term of the bond times two. So we find that N, okay? So term of the bond is the N, right? Is the N. So 10 years, 10 years, 6% and who is stable we are going to use. So for, because for this $100,000, you are going to pay five years later, right? So for this $100,000, we are going to use table two. Table two, so what is the meaning of table two? Present value of ordinary annuity, no, not annuity, sorry only present value, present value, present value of single sum, present value of single sum. That means only one time, right? Only one time. And for this kind of interest, okay, 6% interest, 6% interest is $6,000, right? 6% interest is $6,000. For this 6,000 interest, which table we are going to use for this 6,000 interest, we are going to use, uh, we are going to use table four. Yes, you are right, table four. And what is about table four, can you remember? It is ordinary annuity, right? Because fast payment is not today. Fast payment is not today. ordinary annuity, clear? Now look at the question here. Question said that calculate the present value of the bond. So what is the present value of $100,000 today, right? And what is the present value of $6,000 today? So we are going to calculate first the present value of the bond, okay? After calculating the present value of the bond, I am going to tell you how to record the journal entries. Now look at this diagram, look at this diagram. So the diagram will give you a real picture. So whenever you face this kind of question, I suggest you to draw the diagram, okay? And if you can draw the diagram perfectly, it will help you to easily solve the question. So according to this question, according to this question, term of the bond is five years, right? Term of the bond is five years. So five years later, you will pay them $100,000. And uh, you promise them interest 12% and it is semi-annually. Same annual means one year, two times, right? So look at here, 6,000 and 6,000, 12,000. So it is 12%, 12% means $12,000. So we are going to divide it by two. We are going to divide it by two. So $6,000 in June 30, right? And $6,000 in December 31st. Another year, year two, $6,000 in June 30, $6,000 is December 31st, right? So 
how many times you are going to pay this interest? 10 times, right? Because five years times two, you are going to pay this, this 6,000 10 times. So 6,000 is similar amount and it is more than one time, right? And the first payment is not two days. So obviously we are going to use table four. And this 100,000 is only one time, right? Only one time and uh, we are going to use table two. Now, requirement one said that calculate the present value of the bond. Calculate the present value of the bond. So this is the table you can use. Okay, so you can use, uh, you are not required to use this table also. Anyway, you can calculate this. Okay, the, the, the table is going to give you the uh, easiest way to explain the result. So the face value of the note is $100,000. And look at here, the present value also $100,000. Look at these two columns. Face value is $100,000. Okay. And uh, present value also $100,000. These two amounts are similar, right? Why these two amounts are similar? Because interest rate from your side and interest rate from market side also similar. And we prove this. We prove this. Look here. So $100,000 times factor, right? This factor we are going to use 10 years. So this is our number of the year, 10 years, right? 6% and we are going to use table two. We are going to use table two and we find, we find the present value of $100,000 today is $55,839. You understand? Five years later, its value is $100,000, five years later, but today's value, Today's value is 55,000 something. Now, what is the present value of interest? $6,000 times factor, times factor. Again, it is 10 years. It is 6% and we are going to stable four. And this is the present value of $6,000 today. And if we add these two together, it is $100,000. Okay, so when, when your face amount when your face value of the bond and present value of the bond similar, it is called a face amount bond, right? Now, based on this diagram, based on this table, based on this table and based on this diagram, uh, we are going to record some journal entries. So mainly in every year, every year we have two journal entries. One is, for example, this is the first year, okay? For example, this is year one. Year one, first journal entry is how much cash you receive today, okay? How much cash you, present value means how much cash we receive today, right? And what is the value of our bond? So according to this question, we receive, we receive $100,000 and our liability also $100,000, right? Because five years later, I am liable to pay this money, $100,000. And I receive cash $100,000 today. So today, what happened? Today, you receive cash, also, you record your liability. You are liable to pay this money because it is not your money, right? It is not your money. You receive it from market. And uh, it is other people's money you are going to receive today and using it. But five years later, you are going to pay this money. So this is the first journal here. This is the first journal. You receive this money, you receive cash, and you record your liability. Now, every year, every year, you have to record interest expense how many times? Two times right every year you have to record every year you have to record interest expense you know that according to the uh, matching principle from your principles of accounting one all revenues and expenses should be recorded in each year right so this 6000 first expense we are going to record on june 30 and second interest expense we are going to record december 31st okay so every year you have the similar journal because look at here, amount is similar, right? Amount is similar. Every year you will have the similar journal, but I will show you only one year journal. So year one journal is similar with year two, also similar year three, also similar year four, also similar year five. So I am not going to show you all the journal today, okay, because all the similar. And in the question, I will ask you to record interest expense for only one year not for five years. It is meaningless for five years. Why? Because every year is similar. And I will ask you to record another journal. Assume that at the maturity date, 
what is the journal entry? And at the maturity date, what is going to happen? The opposite of today. Opposite of today is the maturity date. Today you receive cash and record your liability, right? Five years later, you will pay cash and close your liability. Clear. So these are the journals we are going to uh, see today. We are going to see today. So look at here. This is the diagram based on this table. Based on this table, we find that we find that this is the this is the diagram. Okay, this is the diagram. So today you receive one hundred thousand dollar. This is the present value, right? This is the present value. Five years later, you will give them one hundred thousand dollar because previously I mark a question here. We don't know what is the amount today. So we calculate this amount. We calculate this amount, one hundred thousand dollar. Now let's see the journal entry. Let's see the journal entry. So today, today you receive cash, right? Cash is our asset. Cash is our asset and our asset increase. Our asset to increase. So you know that from your principles of accounting one that if cash increase or asset increase, it is debit. So, and this is the cash of present value, right? So this part is the present value. What is the value you receive today? Okay, what is the present value you receive today? So you receive today $100,000 cash, and this is not your money, right? You receive this from market. This is other people's money, but you are going to use it. And today, from today, you are liable, okay? Today, you are not happy 100%. Why? You, I give you some money. You are happy because you receive some money, but you are also have some tension that you have to return back this money. So this is called liability. This is called liability. So we are going to record liability and liability increase credit. Liability increase credit. So we record cash. We record cash, cash debit. And uh, immediately we record our liability. Liability increase, liability increase credit. And this journal is to record the issue of the bond. Okay, to record the issue of bond means the present value of to record, or you can see that to record the present value of bond. Present value of bond. So I think you understand, you understand this part, right? So we've done this part. What is the journal? What is the journal of the issue date? Okay, or selling date. Now, every year, Every year, according to this question, we have to record this interest expense. We have to record this interest expense, right? So I am going to show you only year one. Okay, only year one. So this is this is up to here. Okay, this is up to here is year one. For example, this is year one. In the year one, we have two interest expense. Year one, we have two interest expense: December June thirty and December thirty first. So you can see that interest expense, expense increase debit, expense increase, expense increase debit, right? So you can see that we record interest expense June 30 and December 30, we also record interest expense, right? Interest expense. Now, if we pay cash, okay, you know that if we pay cash, your question will tell you clearly. If you pay cash, cash credit, okay? If you do not pay cash, what should be the journal entry? What should be the entry? Anyone can tell me. In, we, in both cases, you can see that in both cases, we record interest expense. In both cases, we record interest expense. Look, interest expense 6,000, interest expense 6,000. Now, if you pay cash immediately, okay, cash credit. If you do not pay cash immediately, what is the journal? What is the entry here? Hmm? No, accounts people we use if we buy something, we buy any product, okay? Or we buy any asset but not yet pay cash. It is called accounts payable. You cannot use accounts payable for every, every liability. Accounts payable is only for buying some product or buying some asset, you not yet pay any money. But this is not the buying any product, right? So in that case, I think you forget from your principles of accounting one, it should be interest payable.
<clears throat> right? Can you remember? Interest payable. So interest not yet paid, interest payable. So if you pay cash, cash credit, if you do not pay cash, if you do not pay cash, then it is interest payable credit. Do you understand? So as accounting student, you must know that. Okay, if you buy something but not pay cash, then it is accounts payable. But uh, we have, this is called accrued interest or accrued salaries or accrued advertising, okay? Accrued expenses. For accrued expenses, we are going to record a specific amount, a specific title of the accrued expense and the payable. Anyway, so what will happen at the maturity date? I told you that maturity date is the opposite of today, right? Opposite of today. Today you receive cash. <clears throat> today you receive cash, your asset increase, but five years later, when you are going to pay cash, your asset is going to decrease, asset decrease. Asset decrease, okay? Then asset decrease, you pay cash. So your liability, your liability is going to increase or decrease today because you pay money, all money back, you give it to them. Your liability will increase or decrease. Your liability will decrease, right? And library decrease debit. Library increase credit, library decrease debit. So this is the journal for the maturity date. This is the journal for the maturity date. So we, we record what should we, what is the journal of issue date, okay? That means we are here, we are here. What is the journal of the issue date? Then in the middle part, what is the journal of interest expense, okay? So this middle part, year one, year two, year three, year four, same journal. Same journal because of this diagram, right? Because every year we are going to pay this money, same. So I am not going to show you this journal again and again. And in the exam question, I may not ask you to record journal entry for every year. Okay, I may ask you to record journal entry for year one. And I also can ask you what should be the journal entry at the end of year five. The maturity date and this is the maturity date journal. You understand, right? Now, so second question, exercise four, we have required one, two, three. So today we are not going to learn uh, requirement two or three. Today I'm going to show you how to record the price of the bond. Because the second example is about discount, okay? Second example is about discount. So look, if you read this question up to here, if you read this question up to here, nothing is mentioned, whether it is a discount bond or whether it is a premium bond, right? So you have to read the question carefully. And after reading the question, you have to make a decision that whether it is a discount bond or premium bond. So read the question carefully. The same question, same question of the previous one, face amount $100,000, right? Contractual interest rate 12%, and it is semi-annually. <clears throat> it is semi-annually. So if it is semi-annually, then divided by two equals 6%, 6%. Term of the bond, five years, no problem. Market interest rate, market interest rate. So compare these two. Mar contractual interest rate, 12%. Market interest rate is 14%. So market rate is higher. If market rate is higher, you have a discount or premium discount because you go to the market with a product and you sell it with a discount. So if you sell something with discount, right, it means that you have some uh, loss here. So divided by two equal 7%, 7%. So this 7%, this 7% we are going to use to calculate the present value, right? And term of the bond becomes larger equal 10 years. 10 years. Clear? 
So look at the diagram. Look at the diagram here first. Look at the diagram. So again, five years later, five years later, I promise, right? I promise to pay one hundred thousand dollar because it is it, this amount is fixed, right? This is mentioned on the bond, and every year I am going to pay six thousand dollar interest. Why six thousand dollar? Because this is my promise. This is my promise, right? Promise. So interest. I told you that contractual interest rate is used here. If I copy from here again. So this amount is used for which purpose? So this is used to calculate the interest expense, right? Interest expense, yes. And this market rate is used, market rate is used to calculate the present value. Market rate is used to calculate the present value. Yes. Now, if this is the diagram, what is the money you are going to receive today? Okay, what is the money you are going to receive today? So, as it is a discounted bond, today you are going to less uh, receive less money. So, look at this diagram. Look at this solution table. According to, the, to, to this table, what is the present value of the bond today? Present value of the bond today is not present value, sorry, the face amount of the bond. The face amount of the bond is $100,000, right? Now you know that how to calculate the present value of this $100,000. So what is the present value of $100,000 today? What is the present value of $100,000 today? It is only one time, right? It is only one time. So we are going to use 10 years. Because term of the bond become 10, right? Term of the bond, according to this question, term of the bond become 10 because 10 installment. So 10 years, 7% and we are going to use table two. So this is the present value of $100,000. This is the present value of $100,000. Now interest is $6,000 times factor. So 10 years, we use 7%, this is the market rate, right? 7% is the market rate. And the table four, and we find that four to one for one dollar is the present value of $6,000. So now we are going to add these two, right? Two present value. When we add these two present value, the price is, the price is $92,976. Okay, $92,976. Now, the face amount of the bond, that means you are liable to pay one year, five years later, five years later, you are liable to pay $100,000, right? But today you receive more or less. Today you receive less money, right? Today you receive less money. That means this $7,024 is your loss. Okay, this is discount. Okay, this is the discount. You understand? This is the discount. This is the discount. So look at this diagram. Look at this diagram. Try to understand this diagram carefully. So today, today you receive $92,976, right? Today you receive $92,976. And five years later, you have to pay $100,000. That means what you money receive today, right? Plus you are going to pay 702 for additional money. Do you understand? Do you understand this? So today you receive 92,976. Sorry, here. Today you receive 92,976. In five years later, you are going to pay this money plus additional money and it become $100,000. Whatever you receive today, you are going to pay more. The additional money here is called additional interest expense. Do you understand? Every year, 
every year you are going to pay 6000 6000 6000 right 6000 and in addition in addition you are going to pay 7024 dollar this is the additional money you are going to pay them because today you receive less money you are going to pay more money in future right you are going to pay more money in future so this is this 7024 is the additional interest expense so currently your interest expense is this right currently this is your interest expense in addition you are going to pay more money so this difference this difference don't forget this this difference is called additional interest component clear so i will show you this kind of journal entry later on because today i may not explain this today i am going to show you just how to calculate the present value okay how to calculate the present value and other things i will explain in our next class so look at another example another example and it is with the premium it is with the premium so look at the question again today i am going to explain the requirement one only requirement one is so my target today is to explain you how to calculate the present value of bond present value of bond if it if it is a face amount bond if it is a discount bond and it is a premium bond so next class i will explain in detail about the journal entries again your you you are your, your uh, face value or price of the bond is uh, 100000 dollar this is your interest rate right company is interested 12 percent it is semi-annually it is semi-annually as it is semi-annually then divide by two it becomes six percent six percent and five years times two equal ten years ten years ten years and 11 percent is the market rate converted compounded equal 5.5 percent yes so you can see here contractual interest rate is 12 percent but market rate is 11 percent that means you promise okay you promise to give me 12 percent interest but i told you that uh, no need 12 percent no need 12 dollar for example you give me 12 dollar i said no need 12 dollar give me 11 dollar okay give me 11 dollar that means your product is high demandable product okay i want to buy it very quickly and i pr promise you that i uh, told you that uh, no need to 12 dollar give me one dollar i want to buy now something like this so if this is the case what is the price today so look at this diagram look at this diagram so i promise you I promise you, I will pay you $100,000 five years later. And I promise you, this is my interest. Okay. My interest rate is 12%, but market rate is 11%. Now, what is the present value of the bond today? Look at this table. Look at this table. So, according to this table, this is the face amount of the bond today. Okay. And we are going to calculate what is the present value. What is the present value of $100,000 today first? So $100,000, 10 years. And we use 5.5 market rate, right? So it is very, very important that we are going to use market rate to calculate the present value. Why? Because market means, market means if you go to the market today, it is a today's price, right? market is always changing right so today you go to the market and this is the rate of market today so whenever we are going to calculate uh, market uh, present value it should be always market should be always market then the present value of six thousand dollar so 10 years 5.5 percent and we are going to use ordinary annuity table and this is the case so what is the present value today Present value today is $103,769. So five years later, you will pay them. Five years later, you will pay them $100,000, right? But, uh, and some interest you are going to pay. But what is the present value today? The present value today is $103,769, right? So look at this diagram. 
look at this diagram look at this diagram so five years later you are going to pay this money but today you receive more money right today you receive more money do you understand so maybe i forget to show you one yeah, okay i can show you from here So the main theme here is, main theme here is it is a good news or bad news for you? It is a good news, right? It is a good news. So you receive 103769, but you are going to pay $100,000. That means $3769, you no need to pay in future. Do you understand? So here, look at the previous one. Look at the previous one. According to the previous example, you are going to pay more money in future, right? And I told you that this more money means it is your additional interest expense. But this guy diagram said that, this diagram said that in future, you are not going to pay, you are not going to pay $3769. Okay, $3769. Look at her, it is minus. Do you understand what is the meaning of minus? So today you receive this money, right? Today you receive this money, but you are going to pay them $100,000. So this three seven six nine dollar you no need to pay in future. Clear? This this money you no need to pay in future. What is the meaning? Meaning, look at here. It is the minus sign. That means this interest you no need to pay. Okay, this money you no need to pay. It will decrease your interest expense. So previous example, you can see that previous example, previous example, it will increase your interest expense, right? It will increase your interest expense. But here. Here, this money you no need to pay, it will decrease your interest expense. It will interest because this money you are not going to pay them. Right? Yes. So this is a premium bond. This is a premium bond. So premium is here. This money you no need to pay in future. So today you receive higher money. Today you receive higher money here, but in future you pay less money. So the difference you no need to pay. So you no need to pay means that it will decrease your interest expense. So discount bond increase your interest expense and premium bond will decrease your interest expense. Okay, so summary here is, I can write here, discount bond, Discount bond will increase your interest expense because you have to pay some additional money. But premium bond will decrease will decrease your interest expense. But if it is a phase bond, phase amount bond, interest expense is similar. Not increasing, not decreasing. Okay, whatever you promise, you are going to pay it. So this that's all for today. So we are going to learn mainly, we are going to main learn it today. That means we already learned today how to calculate the present value of the bond. Okay, if it is a premium bond, it is a phase amount bond and it is a discount bond and how to recognize how to recognize which one is a premium bond, which one is a discount bond, which one is a face amount bond, okay? And uh, we also learned some journal entries, how to handle uh, the journal entries of the issue date, okay? What is the interest expense? And how to record journal entry at the maturity date, okay?